everyone, it's Rylan. It is Saturday, July 22nd, 2017 at 3.53 p.m. I've been wanting to make this video for a long time, but I was kind of like nervous because I didn't want to come off like holier than thou or like assumptive or conceited or anything. But I have been getting this question a lot from people, um, and it's about acting. Um, so for those of you that don't watch my videos, um, my name is Rylan Taylor, and I am an actor in New York. Um, basically, um, I'm in the process right now of deciding between two managers to have represent me. I've been in New York for three years and I just finished my training at the Atlantic Theatre Company um, acting school in December and I started auditioning in March. So I've been in the professional uh, realm of acting in New York at least for about six months. Um, I have done a lot of random shit. I have mostly... I, I, I have my BFA in musical theatre from the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point. Um, and I've done, done commercials, I've done industrials, I've done professional musicals, I've done community theater, I've done high school musicals, I've done a couple web series, but like I said, most of my credits are in theater, mostly musicals, like my musical section, like it's, uh, I don't know how it's like written on my resume, I think it says like plays or no, it says theater and it's like like all musicals. Um, I've done a few short films and stuff like that. So I just want to get that out there to uh, qualify that I, I know what I'm talking about and I'm not just like some random person who's never really done anything. Um, so I wanted to make this video because a lot of people, whether it's on my Tumblr or even like a couple re people reached out to me on my Facebook and were just like, do you have any advice for... One person asked if I had any advice for living in New York, um, but then they said, do you have any advice for being an actor? And I have a lot of advice. Um, and I'll just start with what comes to the top of my... I'll, I always say one thing to people, and it's really... It sounds negative, but I'm going to say it anyway. My number one advice is if you want to be an actor... Like, don't do it. <laughs> and by that, I mean, when I visited New York when I was 16 years old, um, we went with, like, my theater group. Um, and I remember this guy said, if you want to be an actor, try everything else you can before coming an actor. Do anything else other than act. And I've really taken that advice uh, seriously. <laughs> um, I personally tried doing everything else but act um and life just keeps leading me around so like honestly my advice for other people is acting like the bottom line is acting is extremely difficult not only is it competitive and there's rejection but to to be able to have the emotional availability to be able to play a wide range of characters is extremely difficult because the main thing about actors is we run away from the feeling we run towards the feelings that other people are running away from and it's really it's crazy it's masochistic because no one wants to feel vulnerable no one wants to feel sad no one wants to feel angry we we drink we do drugs we have sex we we avoid these things these feelings and as an actor you are required to rip your heart open and feel these emotions but also do that in front of people and it's a really, it takes a very specific type of person to be, and, and I'm talking like in this video about being a professional actor. Community theater is, I'm not talking about that. Like anyone can do community theater. I'm talking about like if you want to be a professional actor and get paid for it, be in New York, whatever other, LA, Georgia, Wisconsin, not Wisconsin, uh, Chicago, wherever. Um that it takes a lot of bravery and it takes a lot of self-knowledge, honestly. Like, you have to really know yourself 
to be able to allow yourself to go to those really dark places. Um, and it just, it takes a toll on people. Like, I mean, look at like those famous celebrities that have just completely lost themselves in roles and they had detrimental effects because you really have to throw yourself in there. And if you're not in an emotionally healthy spot, it can be really difficult. Like on a personal, uh, Note, I um, I didn't finish my training at the Atlantic. I had to leave a semester early because I was dealing with mental health stuff. Um, I wasn't able to do the work that was required of me because I was dealing with so much stuff that, some traumatic stuff that happened to me at the beginning of the year that I, I really had to like step back and deal with myself. And I'm still in therapy. I'm in therapy three times a week to deal with the mental illness that I struggle with as well as like the trauma that happened to me um, over the course of my life. And it wasn't until March, um, like I said, it's now July, it wasn't until March that I started auditioning for stuff. I took like three months off. I honestly thought I wasn't going to start auditioning until at least like May or maybe even later because my, my mental health was so fragile. But I'm just trying to say is that like, you got to be in a good spot. One of my... my favorite teachers who's now become my friend has said that acting is like giving blood. If you're already bleeding, you can't donate blood. And, and that's it. If you're in a fragile place, you, you can't, you just, it's not a good idea. So beyond that, um, and again, on like kind of my journey, I, um, I went to school for my BFA in musical theater, did two years of that, left school. Um, and I, God, I think I took like four or five years off where I was, I was serving, I was selling vacuum cleaners, I was selling printers, I was selling computers, I was, I was selling windows, like I, I was doing like literally everything but act because I didn't think that I was good enough because, again, I, I didn't finish my program in college. Both of the acting programs I did, I didn't finish because I was dealing with mental health stuff. Um, but, you know, now, like, I'm, I'm getting consistent work in New York and all this stuff, so it's all, it's all working out. But I did everything I could other than act because I thought I'm not talented enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not skinny enough, I'm not this, that, or the other. But that's what my soul needs to do. That's why I believe I'm put on this earth is to help people and to act. That's what I think my life's purpose is. And you really got to want it. You really have to want to do this because, you know, I've seen people come to my acting school in New York. It's a very prestigious acting school that think they want to act. And then they get into the program. And they're like, fuck this. This isn't what I want to do because that school in particular really prepares you for what it is like to be a professional actor because they push you so much. So you, I'm, you really got to be committed, but enough of that. Um, I guess a few tips that I would say for getting started, um, in becoming an actor and like on your path to, you know, potentially being a professional actor is get out there and start doing shows. Um, whether or not that's just doing shows at your high school or your elementary school or however old you are or like community theater is a great learning experience because usually like those shows are you're going to be exposed to all different people like all different ages and like the main thing that you want to do as an actor is start building your resume that is what is going to represent what you've done and you're going to be able to get to go on auditions with a resume. It's really difficult to not have a resume and like want to continue getting work. Um, I don't remember honestly what my first resume looked like. Honestly, I probably just had all of the high school shows that I did, or maybe I didn't even have one until like I started really getting work because I did have representation in Wisconsin. I, I was working with three different agencies at the time, but I don't remember what my first uh, resumes look like, but start building up your resume and then eventually create a resume. Along with that is headshots. Now, from my personal experience, like growing up in Wisconsin and like, you know, doing 
high school musicals and stuff and then eventually getting representation and I don't I, I think I was very lucky in this case but I honestly did not get my professional any professional headshot until like a year ago so I was like booking a lot of work with selfies so my advice to someone that's just getting started is have someone take a nice picture of you honestly like I said I was stupid and all of my selfies were like taken from up here, like I tried to make it look as professional as possible. It wasn't like a MySpace angle where you could tell it was a selfie. Like I tried to make it as straight on as possible. But just start with like your friend or someone like taking a picture, like just right here, no full body stuff, just like right here. Um, you wanna wear like a, a solid color shirt, no stripes, nothing, like no crazy patterns or anything. And you know, test it out. Try some with smiling, try some with your mouth closed, try some you know, with like the smize and stuff like that and just have like a physical representation of what you look like. I'm along with that is something maybe not a lot of people starting off in the industry may not know is as soon as your look changes, you need to get a new headshot. So if you drastically cut your hair or you dye your hair or you gain or you lose a significant amount of weight, you need to change your headshot. Um, the worst thing you want to do is go into an audition with a picture that looks absolutely nothing like how you look now. That's like, that's a rookie mistake. Um, I've, I remember uh, one of my agents in Wisconsin, I would like email her and I remember she emailed me back and she's like, so what color is your hair this time? Because I would have to, I would like was constantly taking pictures because I was like dying it red and black and brown and I was having a gay old time. But um, yeah, so start building your resume. Take just a little selfie. You don't, headshots are fucking expensive, man. Like they're like, they're usually like $300. But if you start going to the really famous people, you're getting into like the five, six, seven dollars $700 range. And that's not necessary from when you're first starting out. Like leave, save that for when you move to New York and you're like really trying to get your foot in the door. Um... Beyond that, like, th th those are, like, the main, like, bullet points of, like, if anyone asks me, what can I do to start acting, like, that's exactly, those are the things that will always stand out to me. Um, trying to think of just, like, little things. I mean, read, like, read books on acting, watch performances, watch movies, watch TV, watch theater that inspires you. And, you know, find out the kind of actor that you want to be. I mean, you know, you might want to be the leading man or the leading lady, and that may not actually be the type that you'll get cast as, but find those people that inspire you. Like, right now, the person that inspires me the absolute most is Ben Platt. Like, I'm absolutely smitten as a kitten with him. I'm obsessed. I've been, like, I stalked his Instagram yesterday, like, literally got down to 2013. Took me about 45 minutes to get there, and I was like, you need to, like, pump the brakes. You're a stalker right now. But, like, I'm obsessed with him because everything he's done has just been amazing, and he's come such a long way. So, like, I really encourage you to, like, do research on actors. Listen to actors talk about acting. I think a really great resource that, like, I've found probably like a, a year or two ago that I really delved into when I was on vacation um, a week ago was there's this YouTube channel called The Hollywood Reporter, which is like this popular magazine. Um, and they have a YouTube um, of roundtables and they have actor roundtables and they have director roundtables and they have um, showrunner roundtables. And basically it's like five or six like famous people they have TV. They, they did two for the Tony season. Um, and it's like five or six actors sitting in a circular table and having an interview. And it's just like a, it's just like a discussion of all of these really successful actors. And it's really beautiful to hear, you know, the stories of how they got the role. And sometimes it's like the worst auditions they've had. And it's just like, I think it's really important to like hear other actors in their journeys, but also that's what makes me inspired. And that's what keeps me hungry is to keep going and know that like my dreams are attainable if I keep working. Um, yeah, and if you want to be a theater actor, like start reading plays. Like that is important. If you're going to a musical theater school, if you want to major in musical theater, start learning how to play piano. 
um, because any college program you're going to go to, you're going to have to take piano. You're going to have to start learning how to sights, how to sight sing. So the further you can start getting a jump on these things, the more it's going to separate you from your competition. If you know different styles of play, different playwrights, different roles, and you can start to kind of find your favorites and start finding your niche of the things that inspire you and you want to work on, that's really important. So I think the sooner you can start building those building blocks to finding the kind of actor that you want to be, that's there's no there's no early time to do that. And then my final advice is training. It is so important to train as an actor. Um, I am like gung ho about going, whether it's going to college, whether it's going to a conservatory, um, which is a conservatory is usually like it's a very intensive um, study of whether it be musical theater, film, or just straight acting um, that you don't get a degree for. And it's usually like the Atlantic is two and a half years. Um, AMDA is a, uh, is a conservatory because you don't get a degree like you would at a college where you would get like a BFA or something. But start taking classes. Like, I think there's, there's nothing more important than an actor being able to have tools in their toolbox Yes, there are people like Kristen Stewart who have made it in the industry that have never taken an acting class before and got really lucky and turned into a star. And she's, I mean, I, you know, Twilight was questionable, but she's good. Like, she can act. But that's not, you know, that's, that's not going to happen for everyone. So I think it's really important to just start taking acting classes and be able to start adding skills that you have because because like I want to specifically focus on theater you need to be able to have the skills to be able to pull off a show eight times a week natural talent will take you you know a certain amount of it'll take you to a certain place but if you don't have the skills and and things to fall back on and techniques to fall back on you're not going to be able to recreate a performance and have the emotional depth that you can for possibly a year wrong run. Again, Ben Platt playing one of the most emotional roles on Broadway right now. One of the most emotional characters written in modern day, you know, contemporary musical theater. And you can't do that role if you don't have the skills to be able to help you recreate a performance you can't just be running on raw nerves and emotion all the time you have to be able to fall back on skills so those are my tips um i hope this was helpful if you guys have any more questions feel free to ask me but honestly the things that i just talked about in this video are what i tell everybody i mean this the, these are like the top whatever number i just named like six things that i think are really important to um, start acting and begin to, uh, you know, forge a potential professional career in acting. So I hope this was helpful and I hope you guys have a good day.